Dave Rendo, Steve here. And Larson. Welcome back to Guess the Meltzer Star Rating. Ah, no. That's for wasted paper. <laughs> We've got five matches each today. Last time, if I'm not mistaken, I won. Yeah, it was only two to one, though. It wasn't like you were... you. Uh... What's the rules again? So, if you get... This is Guess the Meltzer Star Rating, first of all. Right. If you guess it right on. Yeah. You get two points. Yes. If you're a quarter star off. Uh-huh. Whether more or less, it's a single point. Uh -huh. If you're a half star off, you get nothing. You get nothing. If, if you're a star off, nothing. nothing. Three quarters of a star, nothing. Yeah. Any other guess that's not a... a quarter of a star, you get one point. Or if you get it correctly, it's two. Otherwise, you get nothing. Nothing, sir. All right. Who's going first today? You're going to ask me first. I asked you first last time. I get to set the table. You set the table. You set the tone. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Here we go. I don't feel good about this. Is there a theme? For yours, because I have a theme for mine. My theme was matches that Steve thought of this morning that uh, I know you've seen. Okay, that's my theme. Gotcha. There, there's. I think towards the end. Yeah, I mean, there, look, it gets thematic. Yeah, no, you know what? There, there, there's some theme going on here. Okay, all right. Good. It's two themes. Two. Ooh. Number one. Complexity there. Matches that I know Larson loves. Okay. So we're gonna start off with what I think might be, or at least is definitely one of. Your favorite, where's the enforcer? Your favorite women's matches of all time. Ooh. Is this Bailey and Sasha Banks at uh, NXT Brooklyn? You got that right, buddy. Oh, what a stellar match. Yeah, man. Sorry, I'm looking for the enforcer. I'm really upset. Ah, he's behind me. You got it. There is enforcer. whoop All right. All right, let's get after it. So, here we go. Starting off strong. Bailey versus Sasha Banks at Brooklyn. This is August 22nd, 2015. Dave says... A super match and presentation. Bailey came out with a polka dotted headband and wristband to honor Dusty Rhodes. The irony, of course, is that Rhodes himself uh, wrote just days before he died that he's sick of the polka dots and it was only a little over one year of his career. Like, that was unnecessary, Dave. Yeah. Uh, they booed the reference of Banks being from Boston, but cheered her during the match. They cheered both women. Description, description, description. Uh, they... Uh, Oh, Bailey was on the floor and Banks did a dive. Remember the, the leapfrog over the ref? Yeah. That really got the crowd and they were super strong the rest of the way. Um, description, description, description. Bailey tried a Frankensteiner, got thrown off and landed on the top of her head. That looks scary. Uh, description, description. Bailey won with a reverse Frankensteiner off the top and a belly to belly for the pin. After the match, Charlotte and Lynch ran out to congratulate her. This title change was played up big. It ended with Charlotte, Lynch, Bailey, and Banks all together. Holding their hands up, trying to do a modern version of the curtain call. <laughs> then they held up four fingers, and they were called the Four Horsewomen. <laughs> so you're just hearing about the Four Horsewomen? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I'm not sure how popularized it had been at the time, if it was something that very much preceded. I don't know. Yeah, but he's like a wrestling journalist. He should know that. So, Larson. Banks versus Bailey won. I'm going to say four... And one half stars. Oh my God! You have got two points. Larson's coming out strong, strong. All right, you can coast the rest of the way. Nah, I'm run the table. You want to get ten? Ten. All right. Next, next match. match: The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. The streak is over oh, at WrestleMania 30. Uh, here is uh, some what Dave said. Lesnar looked gigantic. I don't know what he weighed, but he looked 310. <laughs> you like that? You'll love this. That's Undertaker looked orange with the fake tan. This was a slow-moving match that had very little heat. They did a spot where Lesnar got out of the choke slam and Undertaker out of the F5. Uh, Lesnar single-legged Undertaker on the floor and Taker fell over in what may have been the injury spot. So there was an extensive write-up yeah. about the idea that this could have been Undertaker's last match. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Scoff. <laughs> no. Uh, the announcers called Paul Heyman the greatest manager of all time. They, this What a tangent. They aren't wrong in considering him in that category, particularly when you factor in the last two years. But he's made it clear he's not a manager, he's an advocate. He's just filling space here. He really is. All right, back to the match. He's got a word count he's trying to hit. Lesnar hit an F5 and Undertaker kicked out. There was no reaction at all to that. Undertaker went for the Gogo Plata, but Lesnar got out with a short powerbomb. 
He tried the Gogo Plata a second time. Lesnar got out again with a power bomb. Lesnar went with the Kimura. Undertaker escaped. Description, description. Ah, here we go. Lesnar hit a second F5 and Undertaker kicked out. People did kind of believe that it could be it, but it wasn't like the big near falls the last five years. Lesnar did two sloppy German suplexes, but Undertaker came back with a last ride out of the corner. Uh, Undertaker hit Tombstone. People reacted to that, and Lesnar kicked out. Eventually, when people real... Oh, here we go. Lesnar reversed, and from the Tombstone position, powered Undertaker to his shoulders and hit a third F5 for the three count. Everyone was shocked. Eventually, when people realized what happened, there was an Undertaker chant, but it was not as loud as you would have expected. Undertaker milked the crowd for a reaction, which was there, but nothing close to what you would have expected. The announcers then pushed the idea that he was going out for the final time like a sense of finality. What was the star rating for Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar? Three and a quarter. <sighs> One and a half. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He really poo-pooed this Well, match. it wasn't very good, especially after, after Undertaker got his bell rung. It right. wasn't that good of a match, but I thought maybe with the way it picked up at the end. Continuing with theme, the rematch, which happened about a year and a half later. That was a much better match. SummerSlam 2015, Undertaker versus Brock That's Lesnar. That's the one where Brock took the, the, took the ring apart, wasn't it? Uh, it was the one where they had the memes of like, ha, 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 yeah. you got it, you got oh, it. Oh, that was a hell in a cell. They took the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, rematch yeah. of that rematch, yeah. Uh, all right, this is what Meltzer had to say about this match. That's the one where Brock faded to the to the, the gates of hell. Or With whatever the old called. middle finger, middle yeah. Finger. Is that what they call it? The middle finger, yeah. No, no, no. Well, Undertaker's fin- the submission finished. Not the gates of hell. From, from uh, gate, uh, the gates of agony? No. No, that's the that's, that's, that's their members of the Mughal embassy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we'll find out here because Meltzer's probably going to describe it. Uh, yeah, we'll see. They pushed in commentary at the start that Lesnar hadn't lost a match in two and a half years, and he's by far the most over guy in the promotion. While that isn't the only reason, that is quite the amazing coincidence. <laughs> what? Uh, okay. He said, he, again, more what? snarky Le- Meltzer here. What? Once again, they went to JBL with the line that nobody has had more matches with Undertaker than JBL. Well, except for the 16 guys who have. Ha 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 ha. This match was really physical. Undertaker was doing face spots. The crowd didn't boo either guy or really chose a fan, a favorite. Lesnar took him down and ground and pounded him. Fans were chanting Undertaker Suplex City. Uh, let, this was the basic. Okay. This was the basic trading finishing moves main event. Lesnar used an overhead belly to belly. Lesnar hit German suplex and fan, fans booed him, but then cheered him. Uh, they noted this was Undertaker's first non-WrestleMania pay-per-view since 2010. I'm trying to see if there's any actual editorializing editorializing here. Yeah, it's all Meltzer snarkiness. Um, well, that's editorializing in its own way. Yeah, I know. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, Robinson said that he never signaled for the bell, and the match had to continue because it was one Undertaker tap, but the ref yeah. didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, Lesnar was celebrating, thinking he'd won. Undertaker gave him a low blow from behind and put him in the Gogo Plata. Uh, Lesnar flipped Undertaker off while in the hold, but passed out, and the match was stopped. After the match, they showed the replay, which showed Undertaker clearly tapping out. They pushed it as the first time Undertaker had ever tapped out. This was tons better. Here we go. This was tons better than their WrestleMania match. I remember that one was pretty solid. The the the, the main of the, the the rematch of that one, the Hell in the Sun one, was really good. Yeah, that was a really good match too. I'll say three and a half. Uh, oh, so close. Four stars. You gave it four stars. Interesting. Tons better. Apparently, tons, tons better. Tons better means four three, stars. Three plus more stars. All right. Getting back to uh, Larson's favorite matches. All right. Mankind. Yeah. Versus the Heartbreak. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Shawn Michaels. Mind games. In your house. Ten. Mind games. So, Meltzer liked this match a lot. I mean, that's how, Steve. That's Steve. How could you not? It's exceptional. All right. Here we go. This was pretty much a Japanese psychology type of match at this point. That's his first editorializing, and when he relates it to Japan, you know he's going to like it. Uh, let's see here. Michaels on the floor gave Mankind a drop toe hold, and Mankind crashed his head on the steps. It's a good thing he started with a lot of brain cells, because more matches like this, and he's going to have a lot less. Boom, boom. Uh, let's see here. Back in the ring, Mankind was Gosh, on the... Dave. They did a Sabu spot. Uh, yeah, the rest is kind of descriptive. As he went for the pin, Michael strangely got up and started punching Vader for the DQ. 
My guess is Vader was supposed to interfere at the count of two, but was a tad bit slow and they had to improvise. <laughs> As Michaels took care of Vader, Paul Bearer hit Michaels with the urn. Sid then ran in. and ch- Oh, that's why you love this match so much. Sid ran in and chased Vader to the back. Bearer used the urn and Mankind sat up all a Undertaker and went to put Michaels in the casket. But when they opened the lid, Undertaker got out of the casket. They did the revolving inside casket gimmick and chased my- Mankind to the back. A super match. That's really good. But the week ending kept it from being a match of the year. What did Dave Meltzer give this match? Four and a half. Uh, yep, yeah, you're another point on the board, but only a single. He gave it four and three quarters. I was so close to saying four and three. Because remember, a match of the year is a five star match. Yeah. All right, so you got three right now. I was now. so close to saying four and three quarters, too. Until three. that last sentence, that's what I was going to say. Well, close doesn't work unless you're a quarter star. Well, I mean, a star. close does work. It, it does work if you're a quarter star. Yeah, okay, next. You got one more, right? One more. Is it is it a Kota Ibushi versus Nakamura at Wrestle Kingdom? It is not that. There's, there's no theme to this. Beyond, I know that's a five-star match. Beyond I know you've seen this match. Uh, because we did a going in raw view on it, a retro review. Uh-huh. Steve Austin beat Jake Roberts. To win King of the Ring. Oh, this match was not very good, though. In four minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, The storyline was that Roberts was working on badly injured ribs. Mm -hmm. Ironically, it was Austin who was hurt legit as he needed 15 or 16 stitches on the tongue and the mouth. Done backstage at the building, not in the hospital, as was said on television. Austin worked the ribs for about three minutes, and Gorilla Monsoon came in to stop the match. Roberts begged for him to let it go, which he did. At this point, they got a lot of heat, and Roberts made a quick comeback before being cut off. Austin got the pin with a Stone Cold Stunner and did a strong post-match interview knocking Roberts' religion and drinking problems. What did Dave Meltzer give this match? Two and a quarter. Half star. <laughs> he said, what the hell? At this point, they got a lot of heat. Yeah, I was going to go right. like one or something like that. Right. And they said a lot of heat. I was like, okay. Right. A lot was, of heat. Jeez, the Dave. was not good. What more do you want? All right. Well, you're on the, you got three. I got three. Oh, boy. I don't like you setting the table. I like me setting the table. All right. There's a theme for this one. Halloween's coming up. Ooh. If, assuming I get this edited in time, it'll be before Halloween. If not, it's on Halloween. Okay. So I'm, I, I I went and through W history and found some of the most horrifically bloody matches Ooh, in company history, including like one it. we were there for. I like it. We're going to kick things off with this one. This is a famously bloody match. Talk about Eddie Guerrero versus oh, wow. JBL at Judgment Day 2004 is what Dave had to say. Layfield hit Guerrero with a sick chair shot to the head. Guerrero bladed, and that's hardly the word. It was coming out of his forehead like a faucet. Oh, my God. Reminiscent of Vince McMahon in the Zach Gowan match, or maybe even worse. Mm. Um, this was really quite an awesome spectacle, reminiscent mm. of an old school Mexico or 70s in many territories that used blood correctly and not overdone to where it lost its effectiveness. Uh, and the place was buzzing. Oh, okay. What did he give this match? I'm going to say he gave it four and a quarter. Ooh, half star off. Oh. Three and three quarter. I think I was about to say that, but he said the place was buzzing. I just looked directly into that light. That was a bad move. Yeah. It's like looking at the sun during an eclipse, Steve. Don't <laughs> it do really that. is. You oh, no. So I've got zero. Zero. We were, we were there for this match. Oh, cool. Talking about Brock Lesnar versus Randall Keith Orton, SummerSlam oh, yeah. 2016. Yeah, that was rough. That was rough. This is what Dave had to say about that bout. Orton then recovered and hit the RKO out of nowhere on the table, which also didn't break. He gave Lesnar a draping DDT and hit an RKO in the ring, but Lesnar kicked out. Orton teased the punt, but Lesnar caught him and gave him an F5, but Orton kicked out. Lesnar then took off the gloves and started punching Orton bare knuckle and elbowing him in the forehead hard until Orton was drenched in blood. Mm. Lesnar pounded on him hard with punch after punch until the medics started panicking. Everything was in chaos because everyone out there but Orton, Lesnar, clearly was under control and Heyman didn't know what was going on. Lesnar stood there while they worked on Orton. When it started getting boring, Lesnar went back to pounding on Orton, but his blows at this point were much different than the ones before. Mm -hmm. Sorry, earlier. The fans started chanting for Goldberg, and that would have been the perfect time to introduce him, but they didn't. Don't have a deal. (laughs) The match was finally stopped. Lesnar continued to work on him after the match. Shane McMahon jumped in and Lesnar gave him an F5. 
Paul Heyman was freaking out. They then abruptly rushed off the air with the idea that people will think they rushed off because something happened that wasn't supposed to happen. That's the party of the summer. That's how the party of the summer finished. I know. Bummer. There was no editorializing there. Not a whole lot, no. It oh, was my just God. Descri- describing the violence. <sighs> All right. Uh, I mean, you know what? I'll, I'm going to say... I'm going to say the exact same thing as the other one. Three and three quarters. Three stars. Wow. We were there live for that match. That match was not good. It was not good, but man, like, you know, Dave seemed to be, you know, shook emotionally by stuff. So he wasn't there live, though. So we got the real experience. That's a good point. All right. Oh, my God. Next up. Devastating so far. Yeah. Next up. A couple of home runs. Vince McMahon versus The Undertaker. Okay. At Survivor Series. 2003. Okay. All right. So this is what Dave had to say. This is the editorializing. Mm -hmm. Vince bladed big after the first punch. Okay. Yeah. The match had no heat despite all the blood. One Mm -hmm. thing about Vince is that he doesn't ask people to take it easy on him. Undertaker dragged him out of the ring to the graveside. It was a buried alive match. Okay. Somewhere in here, Undertaker's arm was all cut up. Oof. Vince made a comeback, throwing dirt and delivering a low blow and shoved Undertaker into the grave. Undertaker came back and held Vince in the grave and went to the tractor that was there to shovel the mounds of dirt, but it exploded. Mm. Kane came out yeah. and kicked Undertaker into the grave and yeah. saved Vince. What did Dave give this match? <laughs> God dang, Dave. You didn't give me anything to work off of. Except for the crowd was dead. I'm going to say he gave it two and a half stars. You're a star and a half too high, a single star. A sink God damn it. Single star. I got nothing to go off here. Single star. Yeah, that didn't sound very good. Damn. Maybe I'll have better luck. There's two more. You might have better luck with All these. Alright, come on. I need, I need to get these both spot on. So next. I'm dying here. Another judgment day match. This time from two thousand five. John Cena versus JBL. Mm-hmm. We've seen this match. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was super bloody. Yeah, it was. Yeah. All right, this is what Dave had to say. Cena hit JBL on the head with a monitor. JBL came back with a wicked chair shot. Cena cut his head open and did the Hiroshi Hase version. He was not only a crimson mask, but his chest was drenched in blood as well. Cena and JBL took full advantage of gimmicks placed everywhere from the ability to smash up a limo, tables break into a TV set, to even a CO2 canister to have one of the great true bloodbath matches in WWE history. The match strongly established Cena as a tough guy babyface in the fans' eyes to go along with his ability to talk as a tough guy. And he's starting to gain momentum as a genuine drawing card. What did Dave give this match? I don't know, it didn't seem like he was that impressed with it. I'll say he gave it uh, three and a quarter. Star short, four and a, four and a quarter. Four and a quarter? Jesus Christ. He said it was okay. one of the true great bloodbath matches in WWE history. Oh, shit. I missed that part. Uh. <laughs> Oops. If it was one of the great bloodbath matches in New Japan history, it'd been like four and a quarter, or it, it would have been four and a quarter, I think. That would have been five stars. All right. All right. You need this one, Steve. You need something. I gotta get, you gotta I, I gotta get something, man. You gotta, gotta get, get something. Board. This is like me last week. That this was, is I horrible. Was struggling the whole I'm just time last dying. Week. All right. You got one last match. God this is the match. Damn it, pal. That, that convinced Vince no more blood. Okay. Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho. Great American Bash 2008. This is what Dave had to say. Jericho gave Michaels a backward elbow to the eye. Judas effect. Judas effect. And Michaels did this quick, had movement to blade his eye. That is literally the sentence. (laughs) Michaels was bleeding all over the place, and Jericho worked on the cut with them, working to make every punch mean something, and Jericho headbutting the cut. Ref Marty Elias T stopping it, but Michaels wanted to continue. Jericho kept pounding on the eye, finally getting a side mount and throwing punch after punch, as well as palm blows to the cut. Michaels was selling like he was out and not defending himself. Finally, Elias dived in like an MMA match to stop it. What did Dave give this match? Take your time. Consider. This is the only thing between you and nothing. Yeah. Four and a half stars. Oh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give it? Steve. What did he give it? Three and three quarters. What? <laughs> I don't need time. What am I, Dave Meltzer? I don't need to take time with anything. I know the. <laughs> I, I know what I want to say. Your dog's disappointed. Look at it. She's looking at me just, like just, you're an idiot, Dad. Just disappointment. You're horrible. Just abject disappointment. She's like now the tables have turned. <laughs> Sorry, Gypsy. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Anyways, congratulations. Yeah. Here. You can go ahead and give me my caning. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! I got to bring it next week. Ah. Bah humbug. Bye everybody.